Recently, I was asked a question, what makes a good therapist? And I had to think long and hard on this question. And I'm going to share with you guys today the, the list that I came up with. And I want to know if you agree with me, disagree with me, if there's things that you would add to this list, I would love to get your feedback. So if you have feedback, feel free to email me, lisa at lisamuster.com, or you can find the contact form over on my website. Just head over to lisamuster.com and click on the contact form. But I would love to get your feedback to see if you agree, if these are the things that make a good therapist. Now, I, I'm sure I'm going to forget some things or I've left some things out. There's That's always the case. This is not an exhaustive list by any means. This is a list that I came up with when I was asked to be interviewed by a grad student. Um, I've had a, quite a number of those recently, which I love. If you're in grad school and you, you're you looking to interview a therapist for a class because you need some feedback or you need to you know talk to someone who's out there doing the work, feel free to reach out to me. Always in love chatting with you guys that are in grad school and um, helping you navigate our field. It's exciting times to be a therapist because our services are high, high in demand. They're not going away. And, you know, all this buzz about AI and all these things coming out in the future, which I'm sure that AI is going to change how we do this work, but I don't think that it's ever going to replace the therapeutic alliance relationship or the therapist client or patient relationship. It's just not possible, I think, to do that with something that's not human. I just don't believe that that is going to be a possibility. Of course, never say never. Who knows what the future is going to hold? But now is a great time to be a therapist. Um, and if it's if you're thinking about being a therapist, um, you're wondering what it's like, then I hope you are listening to my show, getting some good information on you know what this whole field is like. All right, so let me just dive into this list. So the first thing that I think makes a good therapist is our ability to have empathy and to use our active listening skills. So I would say that top therapists excel in their ability to truly understand and empathize with clients. We actively listen to our clients' concerns. We, we are tuning into their emotions and experiences without judgment or interruption. We're focusing on developing our empathic or empathetic listening skills which means we are being fully present, acknowledging those emotions and demonstrating genuine care for our clients. And a good therapist uh, demonstrates genuine empathy, understanding and compassion towards clients. And they can put themselves in their client's shoes, uh, validate their emotions and experiences without judgment. And we're skilled listeners, we pay, we pay close attention to our clients, you know, not only to the words that they're speaking, but also to their nonverbal cues and underlying emotions. We, we definitely make our clients feel heard and understood. And, you know, that is, uh, these are skills that um, definitely they, they are skills and they take practice and they take, you know, trying and retrying and honing in and learning new skills. There's like an art and a science to doing this. And I remember when I first became a therapist or, you know, in grad school, worried that I wouldn't be able to, you know, truly emulate these skills, but you just got to practice them. You just got to put yourself out there and you have to take, like I always say, imperfect action. Okay. The second thing that I think makes a really good therapist is how you cultivate a therapeutic alliance. You have to build a strong therapeutic alliance because that is crucial for effective therapy. We invest time and effort into establishing a collaborative and trusting relationship with our clients. Um, we're going to develop our interpersonal skills and create that safe, non-judgmental space where clients feel comfortable sharing and exploring their thoughts and feelings. And Good therapists can do that. They can create that safe and non-judgmental space for people to express themselves openly. Um, how do we do that? Well, we approach our clients with positive, with unconditional positive regard, something that you'll learn about in grad school if you don't already know what that is. Um, you, we accept them for who they are and we work to foster an atmosphere of trust and acceptance. And our clients should feel as that they can trust us and you know, if they can't trust us, they're not going to feel able to share and be vulnerable with us in a session. We also establish and maintain professional boundaries. Um, of course, confidentiality, ethical practices are super important. Um, always ensuring that our clients' privacy and well-being is at the forefront. So that's number two. All right. Number three of what makes a good therapist is truly got to be a continuous learner, learning and professional development 
you, you need to focus on those things to be a good therapist because um, we understand the importance of lifelong learning and continuous professional development because we have to stay up to date with latest research, theories, and techniques in our field. So we're going to attend workshops and conferences and seminars, engage in supervision or consultation when needed. And of course, read all the relevant, well, I say all, there's so much out there, read the relevant literature to enhance our knowledge and skills. Now we can't be experts in every single thing and um, that's okay. We can't, we can't know everything, but if we stay up to date in the techniques and in the interventions and the theories and the research that we primarily, you know, the, the areas that we work in, you can't go wrong. Okay. Uh, another thing that makes a really good therapist is that we tailor our treatment to the individual. Um, we know that every client is unique. Every client is unique and it's not a one size fits all approach. It's not always the case. It's not always going to be suitable. And that is why I get so worked up about some of these social media posts when people just put these blanket things out there, like this will cure this, or this will cure that. It's not that simple. And I hope you're not taking mental health advice from random people on the internet first and foremost. But a good therapist knows that um, everybody, every client, every person is unique and that what brings them to therapy is going to be unique and different. And they have different life experiences than the client that maybe left your room an hour before. So we are going to adapt our therapeutic interventions and techniques to meet the specific needs, preferences, and goals of each one of our clients. It's important to remain flexible and um, be able to adapt and integrate different therapeutic modalities because that that's going to help you um, be the be the best therapist for your clients. Uh, we are also, as good therapists, we are going to incorporate evidence-based practices into our work. Um, we're familiar, like I said earlier, with all the, not all, with the research-supported interventions and techniques, and we use them in conjunction with clinical expertise and our clients' individual circumstances. So stay, um, we're going to stay up to date on the latest research findings and consider integrating evidence-based interventions into our therapeutic toolbox. Okay, what else makes a good therapist? We're self-aware and we have good self-care. Um, we, we recognize the importance of self-awareness and self-care. We engage in self-reflection. We seek personal therapy and supervision to gain insights into our own biases, blind spots, and emotional reactions. It's really important. We, it's really important that we remain self-aware as therapists to be a good therapist. We need to know what's happening to us internally. When we're working with somebody, something comes up, we get triggered. We have transference. There's counter-transference. We need to understand what is going on with ourselves in session because we are the agent of change and we have to know ourselves. We have to know what's going on. So we know if we're suitable or suited to work with um, a person and they're in what they're presenting with or not. We have to know those things. Um, so prioritize self-care activities also to maintain your own mental and emotional well-being. I have a bunch of episodes, a bunch of episodes on self-care. I'll put some in the show notes so you guys can go back and listen to self-care for therapists. I mean, it's probably one of the uh, most, the, those are probably the most downloaded episodes whenever we talk about self-care. Other things that make us good therapists, we need to be aware of cultural competence and diversity. We have to, we have to be culturally competent and we respect and value the individual and cultural differences of our clients. We foster inclusivity and sensitivity in our practices, and we educate ourselves on various cultures, identities, and social is issues to enhance our cultural competence. Okay. What else makes a good therapist? Outcome monitoring and feedback. We monitor our clients' progress and regularly seek feedback to ensure that what we're doing is working with them. We utilize outcome measures and feedback tools to assess our clients' progress, identify areas for improvement, and make necessary adjustments to our approach. We also have to know our ethics and our boundaries. We have to maintain ethical standards and professional boundaries because that's crucial in therapy. We adhere to our guidelines, ethical guidelines, maintain confidentiality, establish clear boundaries with our clients. We have to familiarize ourselves with ethical principles and guidelines specific to our jurisdiction and professional organization. Now here in the state of South Carolina, every two years, I have to have six hours of ethics. I just went through a six hour ethics training and man, every time I go through ethics, I hear something new 
or I'm reminded of something too that I need to work on, um, that I need to be reminded about. Mostly the ethical decision-making model is something that um, I think is really important that as good therapists, we need to definitely have our ethical decision-making model. We need to have one and we need to be using it. So another thing that makes a good therapist is to regularly engage in reflective practice by reviewing and evaluating our therapeutic work, reflect on sessions, seek supervision or consultation, and learn from your own experiences to continuously refine and improve your skills. I mean, I guess that's kind of similar to some of the other um, things I've mentioned already that make you a good therapist, but I feel like it deserves its own special place in this list because as you um, evolve and grow as a human, you're going to evolve and grow as a therapist as well. And your style might change as you evolve as a human and you get more experience under your belt. And that's normal. And I think that's one of the cool things about this work is that it is a, um, what do we say? It's a, it's a um, parallel process in a sense you know, you're going to grow and evolve. And so what are you bringing to your work as a therapist? What parts of you are you bringing to your work as you grow and evolve as a human? What do you bring uh, into the, the part of you that's also a therapist? And one more thing I think that makes us good therapists is that we can navigate and understand our clients' emotions. So as our clients are managing and understanding their emotions, how are we managing our own emotions and reactions as we respond to our clients' emotional states? And so as we model that, as we emulate that, it helps our clients develop emotional awareness and regulation. So it's really important that we're aware. So that kind of goes back into that self-awareness reflective practice um, tip. But if you're um, able to uh, understand your own emotional intelligence, it's going to help you um, navigate and understand your clients' emotions. And, and their emotional intelligence. I hope that makes sense. I feel like I was kind of talking over that one a little bit, but that's my list. Um, you know, I, therapy is a dynamic and evolving field and you have to develop your own authentic style. That's really important, but I feel as though this is a pretty good start to a list of what makes a good therapist. So I would love your feedback. I would love to know what you think makes a good therapist. Feel free to, um, you know, send me an email, lisa at lisamustard.com. Feel free to fill out the contact form over on my website and let me know what you would add to this list. I would love to know. So I hope you guys found this helpful. And if you um, are thinking about becoming a therapist, I hope you found it really helpful. And if you've been in this field for a while and you're wondering, hmm, you know, am I doing this right? Am I, you know, sometimes we get kind of isolated and, uh, when we do this work. So I just want to say thank you out there to all of the therapists that are doing this work and being, being change agents, because you guys really make a difference in the lives of so many. One more thing before we end this episode, I will be raising the cost of the pod courses in June. And right now through May 30th, you can use the code summer 23 at checkout and get $5 off any of my pod courses. I think I have 14 over there on my website right now, which is lisamustard.com forward slash pod courses. Use the coupon code summer 23 at checkout through May 30th and get $5 off any pod course. I mean, you're already listening to the content. You're already getting all the information that you can use in your practice. So why not go ahead and just head on over, take the self-study quiz, fill out the evaluation and download that certificate of completion while the information is fresh in your head. All you do is you listen when it's convenient, then you purchase the pod course. Once you purchase it, it walks you through how to go ahead and obtain your credit. There's a short quiz, five or six questions, and then you are done. And then you can download your certificate of completion. And Mustard Consulting is a NBCC approved provider. So you, that's great right there. All of the pod courses uh, give you one continuing education contact hour. So once again, that website is lisamustard.com forward slash pod courses. Just click the link in the show notes, use code summer 23 at checkout to get $5 off any pod course because the price of the pod courses are going up in June. So I want you guys to go ahead and get this deal before it ends. Well, that wraps up another episode of The Therapy Show with Lisa Mustard. I know there are hundreds of thousands of podcasts out there, and I'm thankful you've chosen to listen to mine. Be sure to visit lisamustard.com to access the show notes and discover more fantastic content. And I'd be grateful if you subscribe to the show. Thank, Thank you. you.